Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 19 of Requiem. You can talk, guys. Hello. I, okay, good. I forgot to mute the stream. <laughs> I was like, why am I hearing double? <laughs> it was, I, I was actually for a moment there wondering if we were having technical difficulties again, because your bars on the Discord thingy weren't moving, but now they're moving. So we're all, we're all fine. And test. We'll, yep, we're good. Thanks for that test, Mick. Um, no problem. But, curiously enough, okay, no, never mind. We're good, we're good, we're good. Just have to raise the volume a little bit over there. All right, anyway, technical shit apart. Welcome, you guys. Um, it's episode 19. There's not much to, for me to talk about right now. Just a reminder that these episodes are both on YouTube and on Spotify as well. This one is not streamed on YouTube yet. As I said, running a little test. And also today, I uh, I didn't uh, set up the YouTube stream because honestly, uh, I forgot. So here we are. We're not. We're recording this and uploading it after. Um, so yeah, that's what that's what we're doing. Anyway, there's nothing else I want to say. Um, shit happened last uh, last time. Uh, very very important shit. But before we talk about that, we got an intro to roll out. So I just changed the background on the fly because I can do that. So anyway. We'll catch you on the flip side for episode 19 of Requiem. So, before we proceed with our journey, why don't, why don't we give you guys a quick little recap of what happened in the previous episode. On episode 18, Velox Moors were still at sea, as they are right now as well. It was their second five-day block of the 21 days that they are spending traversing the Quetzali Ocean to reach Port Nemeli, the port city that will allow them to tra then traverse the empire to its capital, where they must go. And at the end of the 10th day of travel at sea, they were attacked by something. First, they witnessed a strange phenomenon in the sky where this, these blue lights streaked across the stars and deleted them from existence. And after that, their boat started to rock back and forth as if hitting something, something large. Until a scale whale, a gargantuan mammal, sea mammal, covered in dragon scales, but with both its eyes removed, revealed itself and attacked them. During that fight, their ship was damaged, but the damage they suffered was more than physical. There was something about the whale that hit them in their hearts, in their souls, 
and their own consciousness. Something that questioned their motives to be there. Something that questioned and revealed all of their fears that maybe they have been pushing down for all this time. Something relentless, something heavy, something like the whale that attacked them. A weight that they carry with them. And that seems all the more heavy now. After the ship was indeed heavily damaged, cannons removed, two of the crewmates lost. They managed to defeat the creature to kill it, if it was even alive to begin with. And with Vesper and Violet standing pretty much almost inside the body of this creature as it is stuck by two magical chains stuck to the boat with these two magical chains fired by harpoons guided by Hashdral. And as Hashdral closed in on a hug on the pale-faced Emily, that is where we begin today's session, excuse me. And first, Vesper and Violet. You now, after the violence in your fists and claws seized, you now notice what you were hitting. The side of the whale had been blown open. And the surface that you hit that was vulnerable, that traverses all the way to the a good maybe 15 feet uh, in length across the side of the whale, seems to be swollen brain matter. <laughs> you look at your face, you look at your claws, there is no blood on them. There's no blood dripping off of the whale. Only this strange, transparent, pussy liquid that kind of, kind of like a, a strange, thick slime that is now covering you and your bodies and your anger as you were punching it, killing it. The creature is not reacting anymore. Um, can I try to uh, put a hand on it and cast Divine Sense? See. You sure can. Could you tell us uh, what Divine Sense does, please? As an action, you can detect good and evil. Until the end of your next turn, you can sense anything affected by the hollow spell or know the location of any celestial fiend and death within 60 feet. At this moment, you do not sense nor good nor evil on the creature. Do I notice the, um, the lack of blood, etc.? Yeah, I mean, it's okay. pre pretty noticeable to, to anybody looking at it. Okay. How, how close are we to the ship? Uh, like, well, right now, the, the ship so is... Close. Yeah, the, the ship is trailing off and dragging the whale. <laughs> And, and it is at this point that both Hasdral and Emily, you being on the ship, you notice both the captain and a, a bunch of the deckhands and the first mate kind of running towards the huge chunk of the ship that was removed um, on one of its sides. And you see that water is starting to pour into the ship at this moment as there's like a gigantic hole. Fortunately, the, the bottom of the hull Part of it still survives as the whale kind of grabbed it a little bit above. So there's the, the 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 kind of lower portion of the hull still survives, but water is pouring in from the waves inside of the ship, and the both the captain, deckhands, the bosun, they are all um, walking beneath uh, below deck and trying to somehow take the water out with buckets and start patching up at least you know raising up the barrier um between the sea and the inside of the ship as i see this um i want to walk up 
And when I notice this damage, which I assume I do, I can yeah. can I see it from above? Very well, yeah. It's actually better from from your point of view. Yeah, right. Okay. Um as uh, as Hashdrawl starts looking looking under, he um he doesn't hesitate to cast control water to try to zone out the water and uh, help the deckhands with this uh with this job. He will um Put his hands together like so, um, unite his palms, and as he drags them uh, apart, this kind of um, <clears throat> blue magic emanates from his hands, which he then uses to kind of almost manipulate the water at a distance. As he Very says, well. Dalgar, aid me. And easily enough, the water begins to, to float out of the out of the ship back into the sea and you actually manage to push the rest of the water out and kind of create a barrier in which the the crew can work and patch up um the ship as best as they can at this moment the captain will turn to you um uh or, or actually the captain will turn to the first mate uh as the as the first mate lowers the anchor in, in this moment so that it can buy you some time and you you didn't realize that with well, the ship as damaged as it is it's probably not a good idea to carry the whale all the way yeah. through the traveling so they've they've stopped right now to to repair um and in that moment after you've aided let's take a trip back away from you hashrao and for just a few moments to you, Emily. How would you describe right now that Emily is feel feeling? How does, what is this whole thing that just happened? Although you've, did, you've done your best to push everything away thus far, how is Emily feeling right now? Terrified. She, she never fought a, a whale, let alone a whale like this. Uh, she almost saw two of her um, friends just die. And uh, we also lost two uh, crew members. And she thought she was going to die that night. And... It is with that thought that you sense that presence again. Just at the edge of that one memory of yours. That memory that you've protected. You feel like it's still safely protected, but you feel like... You also feel like in this moment that that memory, that protection actually, it was... A little slice of it was chipped away by whatever happened here. And in realizing that, you somehow become more protective of that memory and wanting to store it away safely from whatever it is that's trying to look into it because it's important. Yes. I'm going to write on my Quisi and Pepper everything that I remember from the memory, like every single detail, so that in case I do f forget more in the future, I can just read it and it's Very there. well, easy enough to do. So in this moment where the crew is repairing the ship and Hadral is helping them, being useful in this moment of probably mourning for the people that are gone, you find a little respite, a little place where you were kind of obsessively using your, your tools to write this down. And from you, we go to the whale, where both Violet and Vesper still are. Violet just sensing, trying to sense something evil in that creature, but it's no longer there. What are you guys doing? Gross. Uh, Vesper will hold her hand out to Violet and be like, I think our job here is done. The ship 
needs tending now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we should go back. I I believe it's it's dead, but it's but dead. It, it didn't look normal, so I don't know if it's going to wake up again or we better go back and maybe Get release the harpoons out of this. Yes, <laughs> it's a good idea. I I don't know what this creature was. And I never want to see it again. <laughs> yeah, same. Let's go back. All right. As you're leaving the body of this creature and trying to climb back into harpoons, Violet, there's there's a sense that comes upon you. Um, it feels it doesn't feel planted in you, but it feels like it's. It's maybe something that you would have done in the past when your father um, when your father gave you those vases with the Ketri flowers um, when you used to tend to that little piece of nature in the red wasteland of Vulcan there's a part of you that looking back at this dead, floating piece of, well, for lack of a better word, darkness that hit you, there's a part of it that is still of the natural world, or at least it used to be. There's a little itch that maybe, maybe it requires some words before you leave it. So you what? <laughs> Maybe you being a paladin of the goddess of nature, Mayadriff, oh. leaving behind a creature that you have just essentially purified of whatever it was was taking over it. Maybe some words would be appropriate. I'm not. I'm not used to talking to God. Was that Violet or was that Lucy? <laughs> <Was that, laughs> <was> <laughs> uh, Violet, Violet, just thinking that. <laughs> um, I'll just, I'll find some place um, hidden, not not hidden, but alone. All right. Um, I'll try to look at the sea and just. What the fuck was that? <laughs> that's, that's a violet prayer right there. <laughs> yeah, yep. that one was a violet. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Lord, what the fuck? <laughs> nice. I know, you know, what is what is what is that? What is controlling that? I need answers if you want me to help you. If you want me to avenge you, I need answers, physic physical answers, not just some hints like you gods like to give. I need something more. My daughter is not answering me. And I, I feel like it's slipping through my hands. I need more. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Over. All right. So that that little piece of your childhood that maybe was was hinting you to say some kind words to the being that you've just killed is completely shut down by the harshness that clouds your heart right now after I these don't, events. Uh, I, I, Violet doesn't care about that right now. I understand. Jeez. <laughs> I understand. But what I'm, what I was, uh, what I was saying was, this is not. I'm just saying what, what thoughts were being pushed into you. Okay. Huh? That's all. You could react however you do. I'm just narrating what you did. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. 
So, that little piece of her childhood was pushed away by the harshness in her heart right now. Much enhanced by the reality of the situation. And that's... In that moment when you finish that prayer after leaving through the harpoons with Vesper, that is the truth, that is the reality, right? The reality is that everything is harsh, that everything is much, much not at all very not okay. Whatever happened here is only a piece of the puzzle. A piece of a puzzle that Wily has mentioned to you. And a piece of the same puzzle that Ketri and Grime are a part of right now. That's the feeling you have. Everything is awful. That's the reality. And it is in that moment that you catch yourself looking at Emily alive at Hasdral helping the crew at Vesper starting to I would assume uh, move down to help as well <laughs> that not everything is that terrible but your mind is pushing that into you Violet there is a part of all of you, Velox Moors, that in this very moment is having trouble in realizing where your own thoughts begin and where this other thing begins and ends. There is another presence in this world that is only faint and light as of right now but it's there all right Fuck. so <laughs> vesper yes after all this has happened you find a little bit of comfort in aiding the bosun and aiding even the captain in trying to set up a few boards or trying to pretty much rebuild the ship just in this these next few hours as you are building something what is going on through your head vesper vesper is very conflicted uh she's trying to do stuff to try to take her mind off of things but she's thinking about Gramps, if he's still okay back in Sogook. She's thinking, what the hell have we just gotten ourselves into? Because I did not totally sign up to fight like the almighty gods and devils of this freaking world. <laughs> 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 oh boy. And she's worried about Violet. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, Vesper, you've... Um... You've been a protector for a long time, right? It's been your job. But you've also been a very kind person, right? Definitely not as violent as maybe you have been turning recently. You were strong, but you've had some terrible influences in your life. Starting with Grime, moving on to Violet, maybe even a little bit on G as well. And that anger that anger born out of worry and born out of your fears starting to build and build and build more that's also another concern that you have now but whatever it won't matter surely what matters right now is fixing the ship whatever's hiding Behind these thoughts, they're just thoughts. They won't control you. They won't control any of you. Surely. Your minds are safe. For now. <laughs> and so, in the next few hours, <laughs> Velox Moors, the ship is going to be repaired into a state where it 
it will continue, it will be able to continue its journey, but severely damaged. Um, and hopefully at the same speed if, if the repairs are done correctly. So I want to make this, excuse me, I want to make this a check to see how well you guys can help the team here uh, repair. Yes. I had an idea before that I was going to do, but Go right ahead. my memory was more important. I want to <laughs> uh, inspire the captain and like the one... Uh, the first mate? Than him. Yeah, yeah the first mate. mate. Uh, with like bardic inspiration. I'll just... I'll try to shake off my mind from the memory since I, I just wrote it down. I'm safe with the feeling that it's going to be okay. I have this as a plan B. I have the memory written down. So I just stand up, grab my loot, and I just start jamming. But not like, you know, happily because it's, the mood is not really happy right now. But some Very like well. soothing tunes. All right. Um, that is going to to help indeed. So I want I want to I want you guys to make here. Um, we're gonna make a group check. All right. So the 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 ship needs to be repaired. Uh, so I am going to allow in 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 case um, in Emily's case since she is inspiring people. I will allow her a performance check. Uh, Vesper, um, I would assume your work will be more hands on since you intended to repair the ship. So I will give you, um, depending on how you're hap uh, helping, uh, I will give you either a just a straight dexterity check or an athletics check. Uh, Violet, how, how would you say you're helping here? Oh, I will be stealth because it's the... <laughs> so... I have plus eight, so I'll be stealthing. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> I guess I guess that violent Can't... hiding from them maybe will make them less scared to, to... I can I can also intimidate them. Okay. Intimidate the water. <laughs> the water says the water doesn't get it. Yeah, intimidate yeah. the whole ocean. I will yeah. intimidate the whole ocean. I will allow you intimidation if you're there being like the disciplinary uh, presence to get them to work. I will allow yes. an intimidation if you want to. Of course, that's very violent. I'll say if you slave driver. don't fix this ship, you're all going to die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and well. um, Hasdral, I would assume you're maintaining control water uh, up for everybody. Yes. All right. So I will uh, I will ask you a straight wisdom check. Uh, all right. So uh, going around everybody. We will do persuasion for, uh, or excuse me, performance for Emily. We are going to do um, athletics or straight decks for Vesper. We are going to do intimidation for Violet and a straight wisdom check for uh, Hajdral. Let's go. Roll, guys. 23, performance. Whoa, natural one on wisdom. Oh, the fight. I got a 17 wow. on my dex check. <laughs> 17? <laughs> 16 for you. Uh, fortunately, those were uh, three successes, two failures from the natural one, so we still are at a success. Uh, and mostly thanks to the inspiration, let's see how the crew does. I'm gonna make a check for the captain. That's slow, I'm gonna have to ha add the inspiration. Um, let me, let me choose this detail. Oh, okay. That is much better. The inspiration saved them. I rolled an eight on the inspiration die. Ooh, um, nice. Nice. Oh my god. The crew sucks. He's gonna use the uh, the other inspiration. The good die. ones died in the whale. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's better. I rolled I rolled an eight and a seven in the inspiration die. Ooh, um, nice. Alright, so Ooh. those that is uh one success and one failure, which keeps us uh at most at majority successes. Um which is going to mean that the ship will be ready in the next hour or so hour and a half maybe a little bit more uh, due to having a lot of failures uh it will, it will it will be ready to sail now comes another interesting part the whale is attached to the ship but they will not be able to move the ship with the whale there i want to ask you guys because the, the crew will assist you in that and they will answer to your commands would you guys like to take something from the whale? Do you know if it's valuable? <laughs> like you the scales can, or something? <laughs> you can try to figure out. Uh, do you want to ask one of the crewmates? 
They should yeah, ask one of the crewmates. Yeah, they probably yeah. dealt with skill whales. <laughs> exactly. Well, there's still a, a fucking carcass in the. I, I will tell you. I will tell you, or one of the crewmates will tell you that scale the, the scales of scale whales are very valuable. The leather that you can extract from its, its skin, or well, its skin is very valuable. In fact, um, the parts of the ship that are, as you know, the ship is kind of divided in three blocks. The 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 little crevices in between each block are covered in scale whale uh, skin because it's very tough um and and you know it keeps out the water uh, so the skin is also very valuable uh and the organs some of them including the brain are very valuable generally how large can we carry a whole brain <laughs> Yeah, that's the issue here. This brain, the, the the whale's brain is already pretty big, but this brain seems to be swollen. So it is impossible for you to carry the whole brain in the ship, but it is possible for you to collect little bits of it. Would little bits of it still be valuable? Yeah. <laughs> okay. The whole the whole brain doesn't or has the exact same value. Um, as as the little pieces of brain because the little pieces of brain are used in many potions and concoctions and, and things of the sort. Uh, it has to be mushed and they will, they will explain that to you because they, they have sold scale whale shit before. Do I hear them talking about this? About like yeah. taking stuff from the whale? I would say you do. Uh, do I know if um, do I know if the scale whales are like uh, are like creatures so to say, protected by Dolgar, like our, since they're sea creatures. They are within Dolgar's domain. However, Dolgar is also a god to sailors and to to the people that hunt in these in these seas. I mean, the whale died; it attacked you. You killed it fair and square. It was a contest yeah. of strength and will, and you guys won. So, it seems yeah, fair yeah. that you take to re that you can reap the rewards. Yeah, I was, I was, um, I was skeptical about like desecrating the body of a creature that was, like, inhabiting a, a dogar's domain. But yeah, putting it like that, if that's his uh, policy, so to say, it makes and sense. And to that point, and to that point, Hashdra <laughs> policy. And to that point, um, this whale seems pretty desecrated already. Swollen brain, eyes missing and oozing out black ink. This whale is beyond desecrated. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But it's like further desecrated. Yeah, yeah, it would <laughs> just do yeah. worse. All right. Okay. I'll so just, I'll just say to the crewmates, uh, we're gonna scavenge whatever we we can, and after that, you can release the the harpoons. Very well. Okay. I will tell you then that the crew is going to help you. Um, I'm gonna say one of you guys, if you could roll a nature check for me whoever you guys would like to lead this uh the crew in doing this you have advantage because the crew will be helping you i have plus zero <laughs> plus zero i have, I have plus, plus one. one but i'm controlling the water <laughs> yeah. Vesper? plus one i have plus one yeah so let's do it i mean you said with advantage oops that yeah, was with not advantage. with advantage just roll again sorry i will roll roll, roll one more Yes, please roll again. Oh, oh no! It didn't, roll. It didn't help. From a four to a natural one with a two. It didn't help. That's crazy. All right, guys. That's so, crazy. Uh, I need somebody to take note in the inventory, please. Uh, on a failure, you guys manage to take. Are you taking note? Yeah, right. Yes. You manage to take a hundred platinum worth of. Uh, scale whale brain. You also take um, on a failure. Wait, I forgot about that part. Let me consult. Yeah, on a failure, you also take uh, fifty platinum worth of scale whale uh, skin. And you take. 500 gold um which is another 50 platinum uh worth of uh i don't know why i wrote gold instead of platinum in that one i don't know what the fuck was wrong with me <laughs> worth of uh scale wheel scales 
There you go. It's something. Uh, even though it's a fail. <laughs> on a failure, we are rich. <laughs> yes. Imagine on the like. On a success, you guys. Yeah. yeah, you guys would have been. Set for life. <laughs> yep. <laughs> even on a fail, can I try to uh, put it in a small vial? The the ink, the black ink. From the eyes. I'm gonna say so. Yeah, for sure. Okay. You can collect it. Thank you. All right, just uh, take note on the inventory that you have it. All right, guys. So, if you wish to say something in these final moments of that night, okay, if you okay. wish to do anything, uh, this would be the moment. If not, you, we can close out uh, this block. Uh, is the ship already repaired? Like I'm, uh... Yeah, I'm going to say you just finished repairing it. Look, it's not completely repaired. Yeah, 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 but uh, like it's we finished sailable. the reparations. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it's... You guys managed to... It, you were able to sail, but there's a huge hole still in the hull, <laughs> on like the, the right side of the hull, because it's just impossible to repair totally from that damage unless you're not at sea, unless you're, you know, docked. Uh, right, so... as, the, um, as we finish the reparations, I want to go up to Violet and or Vesper, whichever one is closer. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. You I'm gonna. Decide, I'm gonna. Bro, I, I, wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll a d20. Right, if it's above, if it's above, uh, ten. Oh it's if Just it's ten and above. A it's two. That's it. Oh, a d2. Two, right. Okay. One is. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know those were those were things. So it's a coin, coin, bro. Yeah, it's a coin. <laughs> d2. Uh, two is uh, violet. One is vesper. Okay, violet. All right. Hello there. <laughs> uh, hello there. <laughs> oh, this ship. Kenobi. <laughs> All right, so I'll go up to to Violet, and I'll ask um. What in Dalgar's name was that? You, you saw it up close. It that was not a scale whale, was it? You tell me. You are a cleric of the God of the Sea. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't bleed. I don't think they are supposed to not do that. <laughs> that thing was probably being controlled by something. And that something is trying to kill us. <laughs> that, I noticed the eyes as well, right? Or was it like yeah. only them since they were... No, okay. you, you noticed the eyes. <laughs> Did you see anything stranger while you were um, close? It's just even more gross than it is by far but I I got this little vial of the ink that is oozing from the eyes um, I don't know if it's going to be useful but we can check it out with in some scientist or I don't know I noticed that that's like uh, not natural in the whale right it's not at all okay it's some real cowardice to be poisoning these these creatures like this and they absolutely know. do not deserve this fate whatever this is we need to look into it any clues the clues we have is just to reach land and try to find for something more and we don't know if any other creature is like that you're right, Violet. I I um I turn to the um, to the Will's corpse that is like we still haven't set uh, set sail, right? So it's still there, basically. Yeah. I um once again um Hajdral puts his hands together to cast control water, and uh, as he expands them, he starts doing this movement to kind of control. Uh, I think it's a hundred feet of water that control water um, allows me right. and this water will sort of involve the will and start dragging its corpse downwards into the into slowly into the bottom of the ocean and as I do I'll say <coughs> may Dalgar bring you peace and uh, yeah the whale will slowly uh, have right. its little watery funeral Wait, <clears throat> wh while he's doing that I'll, I'll ask him. Did, did you feel it too? Yes, I did. So we all felt it. I'm pretty sure Emily did as well. And I what about Vesper? 
Yeah. I don't know if it was only us near the whale, but I guess we all felt it. There's many things I learned in life, Violet, and one of them is that such things like this, they're no coincidence. They're not. And this is way bigger than just a whale. You're right. We have to stand tall, stand united, and we'll get through this. I'll um I'll reach out my, my hand to Violet, like in a handshake. I'll shake his hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sh I'll sh Progress. I'll do a like a, a firm handshake because I know she's a she's a tough gal and I'll say we've got this Violet. We've got us. Strength check. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Man. Squeeze the shit out of his hand. No 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 need for that. No need for that. That'd be funny. That'd be funny. Um. Anyway, as 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 you push the whale below the sea you you sense a little bit of resistance to your spell but the body still you you manage to still drown it and slowly push it down not sure how long it will stay beneath there but there's, there's almost a challenge to your ability. But nothing may be worth your attention right now. Because the captain approaches you. And after these hours of repairs, he goes, um, I realize you're... Well, you're a man of faith, and we have, we have discussed this previously that you would help us if we need it that is correct then if maybe you could just say a few words for the ones we lost of course uh, did I did I notice that um that the man was taken by the the whale I don't think I did right because in the you... midst of all the kills a miss of everything the, the, maybe the one thing that you were more worried about was that both Violet and Vesper were grabbed by the whale in that moment <laughs> yeah. but there were two other people there that got grabbed too and died um, and he he kind of looks at you uh, for a moment give me just a, a second for me to, to confirm the names of, uh, of these uh, crewmates because uh, I have them noted here. Uh, I forgot to bring out the ship's uh, stat sheets because I'm an idiot. Uh, I'm not, guys. No negative self-talk here. Yes. Um, the two uh, folk that were lost were Helena and Stefanos. And he will... It was the hot chick. <laughs> <laughs> the the pictures don't match what they what they were okay it's just oh. some random people i put there uh for okay. the pictures but it was helena and stefanos that were um that were lost and, and he will tell you if please you could perform their last rites of course um i will um i will grab my my amulets that i have um I'll squeeze it tight, and I'll close my eyes, doing um, a mental prayer for them. And after a while, after the, I say this initial prayer, I'll also utter out um, a prayer in Dwarvish to Dalgar to give, give peace to these souls as a funerary rite. Very well. I will ask you just uh, or ask the group for a moment if there is anything you guys would like to do to assist in in this whole circumstance. I'm playing and I'll right. play uh, the tune that I keep chasing so Very that it well. gives us comfort and hopefully the souls that were lost as well. Very Vesper well. will kneel down next to Ajral and Emily as they're doing their thing and just kind of like hold her head down and like respect because they she couldn't do anything to save them so 
She feels really? a little guilty. <clears throat> Violet is just away. She's not. <laughs> yes, this is I to like be funerals. expected. What's, <laughs> what's the name of the captain? Uh, the captain's name was. Uh, let me let me go back to that. Give me just a moment. <clears throat> the captain is Zargas. Zargas Alexios is the name of the captain. Okay. Tiefling fellow. All right. All right. Okay. And in that moment that you guys hold there, that prayer uh, for the people that were lost, you f you do find a moment of comfort. It seems that in this moment where you are together, that togetherness pushes away. That intrusive little thing that has been inching into your minds. But that brings us to the end of the second five-day block. Um, and as such, it is time for the third five-day block. Which means more rolls. Mm. Alright. Finally take a long rest. You can yeah. mark off a long rest, that is correct. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, um I have the the art which I haven't been using. Whoop oops. Um So I have, I charge it with um I charge it with a spell slot, that's it, yeah. right? Yeah, correct. Just okay, then, pop a spell slot into it. I mean I already used all my spell slots, so my fifth level spell slot. Uh, well I don't know if the art takes um if the art takes uh, fifth levels, I think there's a limit to the level uh, up it to takes. Up to fifth level. Oh, there you go. Then there you go. Up to fifth level. You want to charge it with anything else? Um, yeah, I guess since I don't have fifth level spells like available, I already wasted all the slots. I'll do third level. All right. Pump a third level into the art. Take note. Take note of that. Yes. All right, so uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, Mizzy and Fish rolling for mm -hmm. the two days. So now Mick and um, Ray, I'm going to have you roll off against each other first to see who's going to okay. get to roll the dice. So you both roll d20s, whoever rolls the highest gets the roll. All right. Rolling for rolls. 18. Well, right. you have the <laughs> honors, Ray. I'm going <laughs> to need you to roll 1d6 for me. All eyes on you. Whoop. I didn't. That that went goodbye. A six. <laughs> A six. Very well. Um. Uh. I am going to need you to roll now. On the six, I'm going to need you to roll a d4 for me. Two. A two. All right. So on this um, on this uh, fifth uh, or, or excuse me, this third five day block, is there anything that you guys <clears throat> want to do achieve? Yes, Emily. In in the start of the day, yeah, I'll like I'll wake up and during like breakfast, uh, hopefully we're all together. like eating together. <laughs> I'll just say I'll try to do like an inspiring leader um, so that everyone gets temporary HP because we had two fights and we need this. Um, <laughs> I'll be like, good morning, people. I feel great today. I fought a giant whale. I am the, the, the Emily that fought a whale in small fun. And uh, now you can be the will killer <laughs> you are you and you and you you are <laughs> can i get a what i repeat can i get a what <laughs> thank you <laughs> so, a dude a, a deckhand like away far away from you yells out and then waves at you <laughs> Ashdral can help but chuckle, and he um, <laughs> he starts clapping, trying to start a, a clap chain for Emily. The other guy so, at the, the other end of the ship. Vesper will join. <laughs> <laughs> and I bow. 
<laughs> Only right. three claps, damn that. That that says. It's morning. I'll take hey, it. Hey, for me, Emily rolls a performance check to get more claps. <laughs> I'm not. She's already giving you temporary hit points. I'm not gonna yeah. make, <laughs> make a roll for claps. A sixteen. Hey, you don't get them. You didn't clap. Sixteen. Sixteen. And also, we're four, so it's plus two people. So it'll be uh, the captain and the the theater dude. Yeah. Oi, oi. All right. So. Towards the end of the fifth day, I'm going to say you repeat this inspirational thing every breakfast so that you can keep <laughs> the temporary headphones. <advice. laughs> okay. Different speech every time or the same one? What do you say? No, the same one, but instead of being a ooh, wee, it's like whoa, 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 and like other things. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> keep things fresh. <laughs> yep, that's surely going to keep it fresh. That's Emily. Um, but towards the end of the fifth day, there is once again something that calls you outside at night. Nights have been hard on you at the sea. Not exactly because of the swaying of the boat or because you get seasick. You are seasoned adventurers. Only really Emily gets seasick. The rest of you are warriors. And one of you a sailor. This is easy for you. Monks are used to and need to do a lot of balance exercises. And, well, Violet's just taken so many beatings in their life that in the arena that, you know, the ship is just a ship. Aww. But you're called outside. <laughs> That blue light in the sky streaks no. through again. <laughs> and more stars <sighs> vanish. It feels like the sky is cracking. Another whale? <laughs> and then, it's funny you say that. You see just this soft, multicolored glow sailing next to you, next to the ship. It You can see it, even not looking over the railing, you, you notice a glow emanating from the sea. What do you do? I go check. <laughs> I, <laughs> as, can I, I wild instincts it? <laughs> I start sensing a deja, a deja vu. I yeah. immediately want to do um, uh, <laughs> a bless. Again? I immediately want to do a, a third level bless. Okay. <laughs> Go. I'll, I'll right. start distributing prayers for every motherfucker in this. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. You get a blessing. You get a blessing. So, sh so bless is three for a level three is three more. So that six blesses. I'll do you know four for us and then. One for the captain and captain? one for the first mate. First mate. Very well. You bless all of them. Um, both Emily and Vesper, you go check. You want to wild instincts immediately. Um, I'm going to allow you to make the perception check with the wild instincts buff, of course, Vesper. And you, Emily, I need you to make a regular perception check. Uh, can I know uh, how far is the glow? Right next to the ship. 21. Oh, right 21. Um, What? Vesper? Did it not 25. Very well. And Violet, what do you want to do? Uh, divine Sense. Okay, so as you <laughs> once again call upon Mayodreth's senses to extend your own, you do not sense anything evil around you. But you, Vesper, rushing, expecting the scale wheel to come out of the sea again <laughs> to strike again. at you. And Emily running out of curiosity, but maybe a little bit out of fear as well that the, this thing is coming back for you. You look down at the sea. And you see something bigger 
than the scale mm. whale. Bigger? No. <laughs> it is another whale. Oh no. <laughs> incredibly, incredibly large beyond gargantuan. With strange multi-shaped corals that are attached to its body. Star-shaped, um, anemone-shaped, just as if the whale itself was a coral reef. And they emanate this beautiful, bioluminescent glow. As well as the, the whale's skin itself dotted with these little points of bioluminescence, almost like a scene from Avatar. You see this enormous being, it's, it, it is much larger than your ship, slowly moving its tail by its side. And following behind it, you see dolphins. And you see other fish that are quite large in size. No sharks whatsoever, no predators around this enormous being. Do I recognize this creature? I'm gonna ask you to roll a nature check for me, please, Hashdrow. The DC is not very high for you, because you're a sailor. Um, I also have Bless, so that's gonna give me a... No, 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 but... Uh, Only Guidance bless... will help you here, if you wanna drop yeah, Bless yeah, and yeah. guide no, yourself. No, 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 I'll, I'll keep Blessing, I'll keep Blessing. So that's a 13. Still allows you to see, or to know, this is a Guide Reef Whale. Guide reef whales are about as sacred a creature as they come in the seas and very much in these seas in the Kutzali Ocean. They feed on plankton and on remains that are pushed into its mouth by all of the corals and the creatures that use it for safety. Yes, because these whales are guides in migration. They protect all of these other creatures from predators due to its humongous size while they travel across the ocean in their migration patterns. It is a sign, it, it is a, a good omen to see a guide reef whale in one's journey and the entire crew seeing you guys <laughs> starting to pile up in the rail and, and look at this creature they are also looking at it and you see some of them removing their leather caps some of them um just holding whatever they have in, in this kind of solemn moment where you look at this creature cross next to you and when your eyes are driven back up to the sky amidst that streak of darkness that little piece of, of, of the sky that was painted black you swear the two, three, maybe four stars begin to glow again as the people here in this ship and for a moment even yourselves realize the beauty that is in this world I, uh, as I see this well, um, this well pass in the same fashion that, uh, that the uh, deckhands and uh, every, uh, all the crew, uh, lowers the hat, I also, um, bow down my head and I, and I offer, um, a silent prayer to, to Dolgar as well. Very well. Anybody else want to look into anything specific of the whale or do anything with it? Can you hear any noises? I will say... I'm not going to try to make a whale noise because they're going to come out terrible. Um, but Do it anyways. <laughs> in the moment that you um, kind of approach and you would expectantly listen for something that you can maybe even take as inspiration, who knows, the whale kind of crests just above the water uh, and... It's, it's little blowhole <laughs> blows out water that is thrown kind of at the ship as it tilts itself a little bit. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's a gentle creature and its song may be heard beneath the water, but 
not <laughs> not <laughs> right here. Damn, Linux wanted to go meet the whale. Let's see. <laughs> um, He's the ship cat now. <laughs> but um, but you hear you don't hear its noise, but you sense that the creature <laughs> the creature likes being watched and and. It's kind of, in a way, offering you its its protection as well, traveling with you for a moment. Um, Sorry. I want to cast. I want to cast destructive. Weapon. No, I'm just kidding. I'll. Uh, <laughs> I'll. I'll cast the. Uh, I don't think it's gonna. I don't even know if it's gonna do anything. But I'll. I'll cast bless on the whale. Adral wants to cast Bless on the whale. Bless this whale. <laughs> I, I will say that at, at the touch of your magic, you see like the bioluminescence in it and all the corals that are, are stuck to its skin. There's this wave where the colors change, kind of in RGB streamer lights. <laughs> it just changes colors momentarily and then back to these like gentle um, blues and... and, and Kind of that that sea green uh, coloration that glows. Violet, you wanted to do something. Yeah. Um, even though Violet is kind of mad, not at her, at her goddess, but in the whole situation that she's in and of everyone course. is in, uh, she will she will think like she will <laughs> kind of talk to her goddess and say. Well, even though we are in a shitty situation, you kind of do cool stuff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man! Do I hear this? <laughs> no, it's in no, head. No, it's in my head. It's oh, my okay. Head. <laughs> and I'll just turn around and go to bed. <laughs> All right, very well. Vesper, is there anything that any moment you want to have with the whale? The uh, by the way, sorry, just to just to make sure when I, when I cast bless on on it, I want to say um, my Dalgar bless your journey, just to make sure. Right. Okay. Very well. Vesper will just kind of relax. Finally, <laughs> she was like super tense, <laughs> like ready to go, <laughs> and just be like, perhaps the ocean isn't one hundred percent terrible. I don't know how you did this, Hajdral. I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll also learn to find comfort in these situations, Vesper. Well, if you have any tips, I'd appreciate them. <laughs> I think you're already doing pretty well on the on on the two biggest threats of the sea, which are the violent creatures and the sickness. Speaking of Emily. <laughs> You doing all right? <laughs> yeah. I I didn't mean to shame. <laughs> Poor Emily. She just, just wanted to hear the the whale song and then. Yeah. Right the... now she's like too mesmerized, look looking at us, the sea, and all those creatures to even like realize that she's being offended right now. <laughs> Very well. You know, the I've had a I've I've had a. Um, Crewmates that they never really got past the, the the seasick part. No matter how long they they were at sea, just never got past it. And that's okay. Because the true strength of a sailor is not if you're born for it, but it's how much you can take. Well, I'm not a sailor or one to be, so that's okay. <laughs> We're all sailors in life, Emily. Life we is are? Big... Life, life is like the ocean. It all goes in waves. And up, and down. And no matter how much we... We throw up... What matters... <laughs> is we get back on our feet after we stumble. Every time. That is true. But, please, no, no going up... Or down... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, well, pretty. Ah. <laughs> you reminded her. <laughs> Give Emily yeah. a little pat on the back. Just, it's okay. It's gonna be okay. 
my good friends for spotting the guide reef whale in your journeys. You all gain a permanent buff of two max hit points. Oh, yeah. good. What the permanent? Permanent two Eat. max hit points for spotting the guide reef whale. It's on the override max HP, right? Yes. Cool. Or you can just ha add two back in like the character creation. You just add two there and it's easier that way as well. All right. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to remove this. Very well. So after this fifth day, you have been traveling at sea for 15 days total. It is time for the last block. You see that the ship has been going at pretty much the same pace. Thank you. Thanks to all of your contributions to its repair. Um, and it is the sinking song is a very fast ship. Um, and for some reason, it seems like, and, and you find this strange, Hazrael. There, there are moments where the, the wind seems to contest you, but then you've just been getting tailwind all along. And it's been perfect. It's almost as if um, there's something kind of pushing you towards this. And you may think that it could be your, your god. It could be Dalgar. But there's another creeping thought that maybe something is drawing you in, luring you in to something. But anyway, those are thoughts for another time because right now we have the final fifth day block roll, which is none other than Mick. So my friend, I am going to need you to roll uno de seis for me, please. One de Thank you, anxiety demon. Uh... <laughs> So that's a four. A four! Fantastic. Oh, that was cool for a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but that's actually my voice. <laughs> um, Onion is actually quibble. It's his self insert OC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm him. Um, anyway, it's interesting because that's going to be on the same table that um, Ray rolled. So I need another D4 from you. Oh, no. Let's so see. That will be. This is a straight competition. One. I don't like that face. <laughs> you see another magical whale. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So but this one's evil. <laughs> oh no. So guys. Yeah, um... this one sprouts cum. <laughs> 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 Excuse me? I don't, I'm sorry. It's not a... <laughs> It sounded like an onion thing to say. <laughs> Did you want to kill me? What the hell? You're welcome. Works every time, baby. The welcome. I'm gone. Goodbye. We just have to do it. Welcome to the sea. <laughs> how, you know, how am I supposed to do things now? <laughs> oh, yeah, that was too smooth, Mizzy. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh my uh, give me if you guys could just give me a moment. There's something I need to set up um, before before we do anything. <clears throat> Excuse mm -hmm. me. Uh, let me just confirm here. I wonder. I wonder what it could be that needs um, setting up. <laughs> you think it's a battle? I do think it's a battle. Perhaps. I think it's scary. Perchance. Perhaps. Um, this is one of those, this is one of those DM moments, um, where I wish I, I would have done this before, but there's not really any way I could have done this before, unless I knew that you guys were going to roll this, so, um, you're just going to have to wait a second. All right. <laughs> so, I want you, I want this to be clear, this was the same table that Ray rolled in, Okay. So this is a direct competition on who gets the better roll. <laughs> I'm gonna let you decide. So, last five days, 
You wake up on the morning of that first day, and you look out um, at the distance in the distance, and you already see clouds, dark clouds. You sense the winds picking up. You sense the sea kind of getting a little bit more agitated. Emily is not having a great time as the waves oh. start start being more and more intense. I'm going to ask you guys, in, these, in this fifth day block, is there anything else you want to accomplish as we reach the final stage of your training upon which you will be able to increase your stats, your ability scores? Is there anything you want to accomplish here? I was gonna say I wanted to try to bench press Emily, but that's probably not good because she's sick now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, if you do like really gently, perhaps I don't get more. <laughs> Maybe it'll counter oh, the effects man. of yeah. the shift. I don't think any gentleness could could help. I'm gonna be honest. All right, would you want uh, Emily? Will you allow yourself to be bench pressed? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> fuck so, we ball. <laughs> so Emily, you are the you are the person i was gonna say thing but you are the person <laughs> being, being bench pressed so i will let you from 1 to 20 i will let you set the dc the difficulty class for vesper to bench press you What's from the, 1 to 20 yeah from 1 to 20 how difficult do you think it would be uh okay. mighty. i got it all right very well you already know the dc good now vesper uh, let's say I will let all of you if you if you want to quickly edit your stats right now Vesper being the most important one Let's add let's add those two extra ability score points that you are getting towards the end of the journey here Let's add them right now, which means Vi is gonna add two to her dexterity um, Emily is going to add two to her intelligence bringing her to the whopping number of eight um, and Hasdral adding it to wisdom Vesper adding it to strength for the final test on the bench press of Emily. Got a plus Emily. one in strength now. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So with that plus one, Vesper, I'm going to need you to make, uh, I'm going to say athletics check here. Okay. Where is athletics? I always lose it in this thing. It's the first, uh, first skill, I think, or one of the first. Second or some, some shit, I don't know. Other deed. <laughs> Does she succeed? Yeah, it was 11. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, best Eagle one. lift successful. You you grab Emily as you know as decently and respectfully as Gently. you possibly can. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And you bench press her. You get one rep in, and by the second one, it's getting a little bit difficult. So, are you dropping it after the second rep, or are you trying to push for a second rep? Just one more. Just one more. One more? I, I want you to roll athletics again. The DC increases by one. Hey, I'm, oh, no. I'm, going, to, I'm going to clap. Okay, you can do it. You can do it. Violet is and, the gym bro. Uh, oh, Emily no. is ticklish, so uh, she's gonna she's trying not to like start laughing a lot. Are you like squirming? I'm like, hold it in. Hold it in. I'm like... So, Vesper, what's the number? It was a three. <laughs> so, uh, at the end of, of the bench press, or, or actually, when you actually begin the extension, uh, your arms start, start shaking, Emily starts getting more and more ticklish, and she drops on top of you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Emily. <laughs> oh, this is comfy. And I stay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me you're not going to throw up on me, though. <laughs> nah, that was fun. Okay. <laughs> All right. There so now I'm go. just stuck here with. <laughs> Violet, you have been practicing your speed. Yeah. Your with, dexterity. With ropes. Like I, I throw a rope and I go. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh yeah. And at this point, reaching 20 dexterity, you are able to stand at the very tip of the ship, or, or the bow of the ship, above the, um, the figurehead on that little tiny piece of wood swaying with the waves. And you stand there with incredible dexterity and incredible sense of balance 
feeling faster, feeling better as a fighter than you have ever been. Tell me, how does Violet process like this new sense of power? Um, since the beginning, Violet's not doing this for herself. So, every time she trains, she's thinking, this is for Ketri, this is for them, this is to save the world for, from whatever it, this is, and just trying to focus as much as possible um, on um, succeeding and not to fail. Success. You are driving yourself towards success. And in that moment of peace at the, the bow of the ship, after leaving, after that moment of laughter, of release of all of the stress, we move to you, Emily. As you are reading the book, whether you finish the book or not, I'm going to leave that up to you, if it's finished or not. But, but, there is a moment in your travel where you reach that chapter, the chapter from your memory, the chapter that your mother read to you, and it is just the same. But there's more to that chapter in this one version of the book. If you remember and you read now that the man was talking to Big Blue in this in the magical journeys of Big Blue, Big Blue being the central character, a, a blue dragon that traveled the world. A kid's story. In that last bit of the memory, the man asked Big Blue who his friends were. The man spoke of a lord and of a viperous lady. And Big Blue answered the man. And you read it. The Lord? The Lady? What? I I'm sorry, but... I have never laid eyes upon one such as you. He tells the man. You feel akin to me, yet you are tiny. There is silver upon your head, yet you are no elf. Big Blue said, forgetting everything else. I am akin to none, I am afraid, yet it is my fate to aid them all, a fate thrust upon me by another, and if not mine, then it will be my children's fate," the man said. Would you not tell me your name, burden traveler, so that we may become friends? Perhaps my stories may remove the gloom that is over you like the breaking sun basking the grey clouds. The silver-haired man laughed and told him his name, and Big Blue was greatly surprised, for it was heavy, frightening, and old, so much so that he chose to forget it. But he did not forget the song, no, the song he remembered, although he can only hum it. The man excused himself from the conversation very politely, in a way that honored Blue, as if he was the king of the great skies and beyond, but left great sadness behind, for the man's story was certainly worth being told, and now it would be hidden from Blue's curiosity. Perhaps it is for the best, said Big Blue, and off he flew. And that's the end of that chapter. You don't remember your mother reading this part to you. But it's there in this version of the book. A silver-haired man. 
a man you have heard them talk about somehow related to your song. So does Emily finish the book or does Emily just read like half of it? No, no, she finished it. She finished the book. All right. Yeah. Very well. You have, <laughs> you are now in possession. Well, you still have eight intelligence, so it will still be a little bit of a struggle to remember, but you are in, 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 you somewhat remember, and I will know this going forward. And if you ask me if there's anything in the book about it, I will obviously relay that information to you. You know of the magical journeys of Big Blue, and you have gained that too to your intelligence. Now, finishing off with Hajdral. This journey at sea, Hajdral, has united you with your god way beyond anything. It's not the first time that you've obviously journeyed this long, but there is something about this particular travel that has given you strength, will. It's perhaps the fact that this time you have people that you actually have begun to care about and you want, you want to protect them. And this is your home. The seas are your god's home, too, in a way. And you would do well to protect the people that are in your home. And you have achieved that. You have done that. And in that, you have gained power. Hajral, in that moment where you, you realize that you have grown in this journey, becoming more wise, and understanding even that just like in your words, life is very similar to the sea. How does Hajral feel in this moment? Um, Hajral feels like his faith is uh, stronger than ever, something that he, he firmly didn't believe was possible. Um, having to steal his mind from the intrusive thoughts of of um, relying on a god for his weakness and um, and getting past that inner turmoil um, really made him really made him feel more powerful uh, not physically but mentally um, and he feels like with with every experience, he he constantly he's constantly taking away new things from every experience, and these experiences that he's um that he's learning with the uh, Velox Moors, although they're not necessarily new ones, uh, they're experiences that he has long forgotten in his lonesome uh, pilgrimage that he's done. The sense of companionship of com uh, camaraderie, which was very very essential in his uh, sailing times. It's something that he's finally learning to integrate within his being again. He finally feels like, aside from his god and his family, he found new people that um, he has to care for and that he would be willing to see towards whatever end they need. Very well. And Vesper. You bench pressed Emily. That was your goal. <laughs> you are stronger. <laughs> Vesper, strength was never your thing because you had G. But now you don't. So you have to be strong too. How do you feel knowing that despite everything that happened just 10 days ago, or not even 10 days ago, Despite going through that, now coming out stronger, how do you, how does Vesper feel? She does feel a sense of accomplishment. Um, she is always looked up to G, looked down at G, but, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he was always like a crutch 
for her. Like, she didn't really know how to be without him. And this is really her first time being away from him for so long. And so there's still doubt and uncertainty in her mind about is she going to be able to be strong enough without him. But at the same time, like, she's grown quite attached to Emily and Hajdral, and she's happy to have them there. And of course, she cares about Violet. But she doesn't quite feel sated. Like, she wants more strength. <laughs> she feels like she needs more. Very well. <clears throat> so, the end of the fifth day. You all join below deck to sleep, to rest. The storm begins to make itself known. It has been in the past day as you've hit the brunt of it. The ship shakes, the lamps creak. There's a certain sense of danger. A certain sense of... And I know I have been saying this a lot, but it is the truth. Fear in the air. Oh, no. Thunder rumbles outside. It's booming like the drums of an army of thousands, shaking the swaying wood of the ship. Sheets of rain are slamming against the deck, and you can barely hear the crew struggle. You all wake up and look at each other and all of the flames in the lanterns below deck <laughs> suddenly turn blue. That's not good. What do you do? Uh, we are below deck, right? You're below deck. <laughs> we, we have no idea what's up there. You just feel the ship swaying, the flames uh, uh, on the lanterns have, have turned blue. You hear muffled sounds of struggling above. You see the lightning coming from outside on the hole in the deck. What do you do? I will divine oh. sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know what I'm doing. You, <laughs> you reach for it. You've used it now, you know how to. It's not there. Mayadriff is not here. Oh. Not right now. I well, tried to cast. Uh, <laughs> I tried to cast bless on on all of us, level two. Hajdral, your god has no power here. Oh, fuck. What do you do? <clears throat> I, I immediately. I guess we go up. I, yeah. I just want to say immediately. Say to the crew, ready your weapons, prepare to fight, whatever it's outside. We're, All we're, right. we need to kill it. You talk, to, you talk to the crew, and as you do, they <laughs> look at you, and their faces are missing their eyes, bleeding. What do you do? Do, do they feel My like way. they're going to attack you? <laughs> no, they're just staring at you. You pinch yourself, you, you feel pain. <laughs> Shit. Well, uh, oh guys, no, run, not again, not again, not again. Run, 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 run outside. <laughs> Everybody runs running. outside. Oops, oops, yeah. I, 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 first I, I, um, I uh, put my weapon in hand and I, well. I follow them, always in, um, in front of them. All right. You get up and you start running above. But your eyes almost seem slower than your body and everything else gets blurred when you move fast. Flashes of a burning blue eye throw you to the sides of the stairs. You're unsure if you're faltering because of them, because of those flashes, or if because of the swaying of the ship. 
when you finally reach the outside you barely see the above deck lanterns glowing through this very intense rain the ship's bow rises suddenly in front of you as you psh, crash into a mountainous wave and all of you kind of have to hold on to something to each other to a rope lightning flashes and the skies rumble again you look up to the yards of the ship the yards being those um th those uh, kind of pieces of wood where the sails attach to the ones that are are perpendicular to the mast you look up to them and then in that moment of light you see the silhouette of five bodies hanging swinging what do you do Dalgar's influence is you're, not you're here. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. What are they like? They're, where are the bodies exactly? They're hanging <laughs> uh, off off one of the the pieces, one of the yards that's like perpendicular to the mast. One of those like pieces of wood. They're hanging from it in front of you. Can I try to see if I can identify them? The bodies? Perception check for me. Uh, while you um, do that, Ray uh, Hajal, what you were, what were you gonna say? As Hajdral is holding on to to the cables, trying to not swing around, he'll say. Dogar's influence is not here. This is a nightmare. It has to be. What did you roll, Ray? An 11. <laughs> On an 11, you sense that you have to approach a little bit more to see because you do not have dark vision. Do you try to approach? Very carefully with my staff in hand. <laughs> I'll go with you. <laughs> All right. As you do. Violet in hand. <laughs> Lightning flashes again and reveals the figures. You see, hanging from the ship, a half-orc young woman. Okay. Two humans, male and female. A gnomish gentleman. And a dragonborn. That you can't quite see the coloring on the scales. Violet. It's Ketri. Emily, your parents. Vesper, it is not G. It's Arfur. And Hashdrao, it's your brother. What do you do? As I recognize as I recognize this uh the this uh, corpse as my brother, I I let go of the cable, I start like trying to grab things and try to slowly approach them very well let's hold that violet um they 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 feel like they are dead right they are hanging by the by the neck yes. i immediately try to climb and go go grab catchy catch me emily i fall to my knees all right vesper vesper kind of stares blankly for a minute and then's like He's already gone. He's oh, wait, already wait. gone. He can't be here. <laughs> and she starts shouting for Violet to get down. <laughs> okay. Hajra, what were you going to say? Um, I was going to ask, uh, so which brother is it? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I have two brothers. The which, Hajra brother, has two bro which brother do you think it is? I mean, it, it depends. Is it? The, the brother you think it is, is the one that you see. The dead one? <laughs> the one you think it is. Right, okay. Uh, as I hear uh, Vesper shouting, yeah. I stop. I, I come to my senses. I, I, I'm, I'm in that limbo that I, I know it's a nightmare, but it's Ketri there. And I, and I shout, what do you want? Lightning strikes just next to the ship. Twice. Three times. Avoiding it somehow. And then a muffled shriek builds beneath you. Beneath the seas. Beneath your consciousness. Waves rise to the sides, whoosh, threatening to engulf the ship. 
and lightning flashes again. Shadows. Silhouettes of people are projected upon the waves. Time seems to slow in that moment. And the water seems to get incredibly close to all of you. Violet. On the water, you see the faces of your father. Of Ketri. Of Grime. Vesper, you see the faces of your master. Of Arfur. And of G. Emily, your family. Adventurers that you followed in the past. Friends that you had made. And Hasdral, you see sailors from your ship. You see your two brothers. And you see your mother. Where their eyes should be, there are only vacant holes. A deep darkness that you have only seen in that whale and violet that you saw on the dream that kicked everything off. <laughs> Lightning cracks down onto the mast and the entire ship suddenly ignites in flame. Emily, your eyes become consumed by this flame, a vision that you have seen, a vision that was pushed into your mind and then those flames suddenly turn to blue. The heat is searing, but the flames are touching something. They're touching something within yourselves, not your body. They are heating a bond, a connection. You feel as if two parts of you are being split, two parts that can't live without each other. One of them is close to breaking, close to shattering, just as the threat, just at the threat of losing the other. And as the flames begin to consume you, as you see your bodies burn, you all wake up in the ship with the sound of seagulls in the morning. Are we... Do we sleep in the same room? You, you do. I'll look around and try to see if, uh, if they're... If they also felt it. I look at him and I say... Yes, uh -huh. even though he didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I was there. That was worse than the whale. <laughs> that was way worse. This was no... Uh, this was no nightmare. No, this was a nightmare. A very real one, but it was. It wasn't so real. But it was terrible. <laughs> Is she crying? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Despite everything, Vesper goes and sits next to, to Emily and just kind of hugs her. You don't have to do this anymore if you don't want to. I, 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 I do. <clears throat> um, my family is very far, so I knew they couldn't be there, but still, I just froze. So I want to become stronger in order to fight whatever this is and so that no one is going through this whole thing. Hasdral's breathing is still a little heavy. He'll uh, he'll get up from his from his bed. He'll uh, quickly put on his um his cloaks and his vestments and everything. He'll say I'm sorry. I need a minute and he just walks off from the the room we'll go to you in a moment then i'll 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 ask uh emily were those were your were those your parents yes and vesper who was that man he was the friend of both gramps and i before before Velat's wars existed he's no longer in this world. And your parents, Emily? Are are they... Do you know if they are... Last time I checked, they were okay. <laughs> so... The nightmares... 
show us only people that we cared about or still care doesn't mean they are dead yeah I would say so I hope so I okay. think I think it was a warning that if we fail at whatever this is that is what we face. I get up, but like, super strongly <laughs> to those words. We will not fail! It will not happen. And I, I storm off. <laughs> Vesper will look at, at Violet and just kind of put her hand over Violet's hand and like give it a little squeeze and be like, I will not let this happen to Ketri like I let it happen to Arfa. I promise you. If we keep together, I I truly believe we can defeat whatever this is. I think we are our own strength at this point, and I find strength in you. I can say the same. I give her a little kiss. <gasps> Like on the cheek, on the like, where's the kiss? <laughs> on the lips. This <laughs> oh. kind of goes Boop, for a second. <laughs> I'm glad I left the room. <laughs> we are alone. No one knows this. Yeah. Yes. We are alone. You don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I see it. I'm God. <laughs> God, I'm close the, your eyes. <laughs> I'm the Korean. Okay. <laughs> and your ears as well. <laughs> I'm loving the tangible panic just just happening. <laughs> the, the... If Vesper wasn't pink, she'd be blushing even more right now. <laughs> yeah, not possible. <laughs> exactly. She just goes, Violet? <laughs> but, uh, Grime? <laughs> she, uh, well, Grime is sorry. <laughs> Ha, ha, never mind. And she gives Violet a kiss. <laughs> what the fuck? We're making out? <laughs> <laughs> it's a coping mechanism from like the nightmare. <laughs> it's the first time this happens. Awesome. Um, before we go, well, yeah. Before we go to Hajral outside, after you enjoy that moment of comfort, Violet, once you leave the room, <laughs> an image flashes in your mind. Shit. An eyeless grime. And you feel this sense of betrayal. You feel this longing for revenge that is not your own. But it could um, be just your fear. <laughs> yes, the, the moment I sense that, I'll think... I don't know what I think. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> you can take a moment. It's a lot to unpack. Um, I know where my focus is. But I still can have my moments of happiness, right? And I just go. Very well. Hajral, you took off on your own for a brief few moments of respite, I'd like to kind of get a, a feel for what you're going through right now. Uh, Hajral immediately goes to the to the quarter deck, like the, the back part of the ship. He just uh, holds on to, like um, facing the sea, holding his pendant and he, he starts doing some prayers. Um, but as he's doing his prayers, his mind still can't help but slip um, towards his family, even though he's on this journey and he's he's uh, he's 
left them for quite some time and he has no remorses he knows um, or rather he firmly believes that they're that they're fine this way and that they'll be okay he still can help but start feeling the creeping feeling of of worry of what could happen to them especially for his only brother that he has left he doesn't want him to go the same way he doesn't he, he needs him to be safe very well so because of this night my friends until you take a long rest in land you all have two points of exhaustion this means that your speed is halved and you and you have disadvantage on ability checks usually a long rest would remove one point but the condition on this exhaustion is that you rest on land once you do that you will remove both points of exhaustion so is there a way to apply exhaustion in uh, the ND Beyond? I think there might uh, be. Yeah, yeah, I just, I just did that. You, on your uh, armor class, do you see the thing on your armor class? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the, on the right, you have defenses and conditions. Oh, Click okay. on conditions, oh. and down there, you have the oh. exhaustions point. Oh, okay. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. That's cool. Mm. No All right. That, that reminds me that I wanted to change my spells, but I forgot like three times in a row. Holy shit. <laughs> Hey, you can do it now if you want to. I can? Okay. Just um, I so. want... Okay, so before we go to sleep, I want to... I want to pray... That, do I need to say which spells I rotate or...? No, not at all, my friend. Okay. You can keep okay. whichever. You can just rotate whatever you want. All right. All right. Done. So, my friends, that was the last five-day block. And so... At the night of the next day. After close close to a month of sailing the Katzali Ocean, you hear the shouts of Land Ho across the ship. Finally. As you arrive at your destination at night time. Now, give me a moment, please. <clears throat> I imagine Emily's legs are just wobbly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. From a distance, you see Port Nemeli, the busiest trade city in the southern coast of Kaifam. You can see how the port itself wraps around the coast and into the Karamet River, where your ship currently sails into. Let me just lower this, the volume of this a little bit. <clears throat> you move past the sea-facing portion of the docks to go into the river dock. You see the lighthouses signaling the ships and the scintillating warm yellow lights of the streets and houses contrasting with the silvery shores to the side. The river mouth extends wide and has more than enough space to accommodate the multiple ships that it currently has docked. Yours approaches slowly. The captain as they finish all the process and dock the ship and the anchor is weighed down, the captain goes up to Violet. <clears throat> Madam Violet, we have completed the journey. I am embarrassed to ask this of you. But we need to repair our ship before we go back. And we have lost two of our crew members. Captain, worry not. How much do you need? 
How much are you willing to give? I am sorry, sir. I have no idea how much is to repair a ship, so I need a number. <sighs> Just ask and I'll give you. 4,000 gold. Cap. <laughs> 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 Captain, I don't have that with me, <laughs> but I can I can give you what we scavenged from the the whale. Whatever suits you, we just need help. I am embarrassed to ask it of you. It was our duty to bring you here to the king. Can I inside check? Of course. Roll an inside check. Uh, 15. There is a deep sense of shame in Captain Zargas's mm -hmm. face. Okay. And uh, the amount he gave, is it... Did it feel... Uh, the, okay. the scale will talk part of the, the skin that united the three blocks of the ship. There's a reason why you couldn't go beneath the sea for the rest of your of your travels. The very enchantments that hold that wood together, that allow it to uh, sustain pressure beneath the ocean, uh, have been broken and he needs resources to get them back working. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll give him everything we scavenged. scavenged. So, a hundred plot, fifty plot, fifty plot, right? Of All right. Worth of things. So, two thousand uh, gold total? Two thousand gold. Yeah, that's half of what he asked. That's already pretty good. Uh, and uh, five hundred gold as well. All right. You, um, you give that to the captain, uh, and he goes, ah. All right, I trading the scale wheel things. We, if it weren't for all of you, we we wouldn't have defeated the thing. We will take just whatever help you can provide with money. If it's the five hundred gold, we will make do and perhaps work in the port. I mean, sure, Captain, we, we really don't need that much money or or even if you want to use the the, the materials, it's... Maybe it, if it we could really... keep the skin, then. Sure, sure, keep the skin, keep the gold, and... Um, I would feel yeah, better I... if we just, if we kept it at that. Okay, Captain. It was a pleasure traveling with all of you, and thank you for what you did. And we thank you for uh, being able to bring us safely, well, kind of safely, <laughs> to the port. We, we, we owe you big time. And he bows to you, and you... Uh, leave the skin there because there was large patches of skin that you collected you leave it there for them to work with that might have that might actually help them at least maybe not fully recover the enchantments on the ship that possibly they need to return to Sogok for um, where they have people there that can help them with that money they can't really do it here but okay so we keep the the brain and the scales brain and scales are yours okay. uh, you're uh, down 500 goes... gold in skin yeah before it goes, I want to ask, uh, Captain, do you know do, do you know the city well? I have traveled here only once or twice in my life. I've kept mostly to the shores of Ipsa. What do you need to know? Um, do you have a I don't know a favorite place to sell, or even do you know any kind of scientist, or that? 
investigates stuff? Vesper, you know the answers to some of these questions. Of course there are, I do. There are people <laughs> here in Port Namelli that know or, or that deal with magical things and magical items that might be able to help you. Um, there are a few places where you might, you know, you might be able to get trades for magical materials or magical creatures' materials, uh, such as the Prancing Blade, um, or even the Gnomish Gentleman, uh, and obviously Verlasco's Scrolls and Supplies, all rivals of Arthur. notes one second <laughs> finding them <laughs> but while you look upon your notes you sense vesper knows something violet and the captain goes ah i know only of general trade for supplies i would think that deeper in the city you will find what you look for okay i guess we go for an adventure thank you very much captain i wish you farewell all right Still on the ship, on the ship now docked, you look at the city. The black and blue of Soguk is now traded by the white, light brown and gold of this city, Port Namelli. The buildings are square and wide, the windows have curved, pointy arches, and towers end in domes that come to a point as well. Some of the buildings have tiles and with geometrical patterns painted on them, while others are just pure limestone simplicity. Here in the port itself, there are all manner of tall tents with hanging tapestries that show those same patterns, geometric, geometrical patterns, embroidered in deep reds, dark blues, black and gold, all uh, shining or all um, lit up by the lamps uh, on the streets. There's also definitely a presence of the old tribal origins of this good city with totems and sandstone statues raised all over the port, facing the river and the sea, depicting a woman with her arms extended out and then covered in blue paints, very heavy eyeliner and a crown of leaves. I will allow both Hasdrau, Emily and Vesper to roll a history check for me to know more information about this figure. 20. 30. 15. <laughs> Very well. It is, or the city, is historically named after a hero of the Lar tribe who worshipped the seas. Nemeli was a fisherwoman that managed to feed her entire village after long periods of no fish. It said she dove into the sea while covered in ancient ritualistic paint and held her breath for hours while waiting for fish to return to the coastal waters. And so they did. And that is the history behind Port Namelli and how it came to be. But that's only a little small detail. You disembark and reach the, do the docks on foot. A guard holding a piece of parchment on a wooden board with a little ink pot attached to it stops you, flanked by two other guards. You see their garments here of uh, yellows and reds uh, and wearing these helmets that kind of come to a point, um, although they are kind of bronze in nature, it seems, but they're almost like uh, Gondor soldiers' helmets. And they stop you. I'm gonna ask you guys who is walking ahead of everyone. And who's in front? Yeah, who's in front? I'm not. <laughs> it's not Emily. <laughs> not Emily. Got it. <laughs> I don't know. I can go in front. It doesn't make much sense because I, I don't know the city. I have no idea where we are. You're just disembarking. You know. No one okay. does. Just getting off the boat now. Then I'll, I'll go. All right. The guard addresses you. Stop, please. Halt. I won't. I no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I am under uh, the orders of the Empress herself to record who you are, where you've come from, and what your business here is in the Empire. So please, if you could tell me your names, all of you, why you are here and where you're from, I would sincerely appreciate that, and we would avoid unnecessary scuffles. Uh, I am Violet Ion. These are Velox Mars, Emily, Ajral, and Vesper. <laughs> so that is uh, Hajdral with two A's, one A. <laughs> one A and then two A's. Very well. Do, do your other friends not have last names? I have no idea. I am <laughs> D. Emily. So a D before Emily. Yeah. Very well, D. Emily. So Emily is your last name. How unusual. Uh, <laughs> and the rest of you? It is merely Vesper. Very well. And you, Dragonborn, sir? Likewise. And now, please, uh, where do you hail from? Uh, we come from Soguk. <laughs> so Soguk. Very well, so Ipsa. Long voyage. And uh, trouble someone. And uh, what is your purpose here in the Empire? We want to reach Oaza. We're just passing by. All right, are you here for entertainment, business, love, romance? Business. Business. <laughs> what is the nature of this business? Is this business a trade? Is this business assassination? Is this business romance? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's very interested, apparently. <laughs> um, we hope not we're, we're it's, it's just trading well trade <laughs> and uh, what do you bring for trade here with the empire my tunes i am a singer <laughs> and player and so you are here to enter the entertainment industry in the soul empire and of sell course. some materials as well i show him the materials and... very well all right he rips off the paper and he folds it, and he gives it to you, Violet. Okay. You are to keep this with you at all times. If any trouble happens caused by you or in which you are involved within the next 15 days, the Empire will invite you to leave. If you refuse that invitation, you will be hunted down, persecuted, and then thrown into our jails to perhaps face execution if that is what the judges deem necessary. We are currently at war and all efforts for the safety of the Empire are not enough. That being said, I hope you enjoy your stay in the Soul Empire. I hope you enjoy your freedoms for this is the only place where they still remain yours. Do, do, does Violet know anything about this war? No, never heard of it. Nothing. Just what what know? war is this that you're talking <laughs> yeah. about? Does anybody good? As you ask him, he goes, We are at war with Herskellen in our northern borders. Although we are many, many miles and a whole empire away from the northern borders here, uh, we have to be careful with infiltrators. Empress Diana does not wish for you to, or for people to be barred from entering the empire, but still we must be careful. I am sure you understand. And is Oaza in the Empire? Of course, it is the capital. Okay. <laughs> it's the first time I'm here. I'm I'm a tourist. <laughs> so also tourism. I should have added it to your document. <laughs> uh, no, no. Mind. But while we're... while we are in business, we 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 care to see the city, of course. Very well. Well, they I... no mind. We'll be on our way. Thank you for your war welcome, sir. No problem. Enjoy your time. Warm. And he um, he signals you to move past him. Do you go? 
Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You take your few first steps in Port Namelli. The air is dense, thick, tense even. There is a collective anxiety in this place. Very different from Soga, although towards the last few days you were sensing some of that creeping in, but here it's already settled. You move deeper into the port and into the city and you notice a commotion. You see a group of guards grabbing a woman and carrying her by by the arms as she kicks and squirms, yelling out nonsense and trying to reach for her eyes with her hands. Mm. Amongst all of that nonsensical screaming, she complains of not being able to sleep. She complains that she sees things. She speaks of monsters in her room. An older woman trails that group of people, chasing after a man wearing a white tunic with a yellow scarf uh, slash hood, kind of one of those, you know, scarves that you can put over your head, over his shoulders, with golden embroideries. He has a pendant that ends in two hands holding the sun, with the rays bleeding out in between the fingers. The older woman is pleading for her child, begging for her to be healed, while this priest seems to assure the mother that it will happen, and that they will do the best they can. They cross, move past you. Everybody is reacting to it. You pass by a few people here in the port and their eyes have huge, dark bags. It is a concerning vision, but it is night. What do you do? Have we already gone past the um, the lady pleading for help for the? She was. Uh, they were trailing off, moving deeper into the city, so okay. they would have already passed. Um. Whatever mm. we do, we must not interfere with these people. Why not? I don't want any trouble. You heard the guard. And I don't think we helping one or two people is going to change anything. We need to go for the big picture. Okay. And That's for now, fair. I would say we find some place to rest because I am fucking tired. <laughs> Good idea, Violet. <laughs> Anything brings no harm, but still, let's see where this leads us. Do you guys know anywhere to place? Uh, any, what? <laughs> any, <laughs> any, <laughs> Vesper! Any, do I know you, a tavern? <laughs> you know two of them. Uh, Damn. Here, right now, you have two options for an inn. You have the Hearty Harpy, which is the more expensive option, and you have the Prickly Tankard which is kind of the more almost squalid option. <laughs> so, team, are we feeling dirty? Or are we feeling like we deserve a good rest? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm feeling fancy, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, queen! <laughs> yes, queen, slay! <laughs> <laughs> so we go into the nice one, then. <laughs> Very well. First of all, I'm really sorry to do this. I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw. Okay. All of you. Oh. Uh -oh. Yeah. Eighteen. Okay. Eleven. All right. Eleven as well. Okay. Four. All right. Do you want to use Indomitable to reroll that, Violet? <laughs> now that you ask, yes. <laughs> <laughs> 17 Alright You move uh, Cross town Vesper You are guiding your party here 
Um, the Hardy Harpy is located kind of on the riverbank side of the port. So it's a little bit um, north from where you are, which would be to your left right now. You guide your people through the streets, and there's just... As you move... You know, people are walking by the streets, and... You remember Port Namelli being a jolly place. Um, lots of people from different cultures here. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be this fantastic, um, bustling city, but... Every time you kind of shoot a look at someone that is, you know, I mean, maybe not aggressive from you, but, you know, just a little bit curious to someone, they flinch. There's a permanent air of... It's not quite anxiety. It's different from that. People are afraid walking at night. Um, but they're not... They don't seem to be kind of paying attention to their surroundings too much. They're closed within themselves, um, there are still some people that are drunk, there are still some people partying, but this is not the level that you remember. But you finally reach a two-story sandstone building with, as you walk in, vaulted ceilings, domed roofs. The sign on the outside had a painted, very curvy harpy with feathers of extravagant colors and purposefully not covering the most intimate parts. You see the employees of the establishment, they wear garments ornate with those same feathers. And the inside of this lounge area has bold, colored tile with, once again, feathered geometrical patterns, red silk curtains, and dark red velvet cushions with golden trim all on the floor next to small tea tables. There are people smoking, there are people drinking. Some of them are in good spirits. But even the servants are uneasy. Is there anything that you guys... Obviously, you are searching for a room. I just want to know if, if there's anything you guys want to talk about before you go to sleep. Uh, we already in the tavern then at this point. Yeah, just I'm waiting I'm just... To I'm just asking to see yeah. what you, how to direct you to where we're going. Um, Vesper will just kind of look a bit pensive, a little thoughtful for a second, and go, This place sure has changed since I was last here. I'm sure it's all connected. So you're suggesting there's something taking over this city? Perhaps it is the same thing that has been trying to take control of us. Well, this trip just kept getting better. I see. <laughs> you can see that Hajdral is still is still uh, his spirits are still a bit lowered from uh, from from yesterday. I understand. I don't think but it's only this city. We have to Where keep pressing going? on. It's a lot of pressure, but it's all on our shoulders. You're right, Hajral. We can't let this stop us here or anywhere. I <clears throat> I sense that Hajral is down, hmm. and I I say, just keep fighting. Don't don't let it go into your head. It's what it wants. You're right, Violet. I have, and I will. Thank you. Emily, just for a moment, could you just, in this, while they're talking, what is Emily paying attention to? To the possible bed. She's very sleepy. <laughs> very well, fair enough. I'm going to say for the purposes of time that you, if you would be willing to let go of some five old gold, you will, you will find a place, a room large enough for all four of you to sleep together. I'll pay, Wait. guys, I'll pay, I'll pay. <laughs> <laughs> we love a sugar mommy. mommy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> 
However, it takes some time for you to go to sleep. After all, a lot has been happening. And stepping inside of this place, stepping inside of Port Namelli, has brought something about in you. The closer you've been getting, the harder it has to been to find rest, to find sleep, to find moments of respite away from your thoughts. And you've been noticing, each and every one of you have been noticing this, that those times when you're together, when you talk to each other, those are the times where all those thoughts are pushed away. The time when you're with your god, Hasdral. Those thoughts are pushed away. Emily, when you're singing. But it's been getting harder and harder. You go to sleep. Darkness takes over your minds. You all wake up in the middle of the night with a piercing scream that comes from outside. All of you react to it. What do you do? I look at everyone to make sure, you know, they're all... Like, I'm, I'm hearing this, you know? It's not me dreaming. As I wake then... up and I hear this, I immediately jump out of bed and I I grab my my things try to like whatever i have handy to put on me and uh and i start to uh, slowly walking towards the door yes is there I'm... a window in the room yeah there is I a window in the room the window too. yeah you we can go... both go you go to the window as harsh is leaving the door and you see in kind of an open square in the port that you can envision from there a woman just herself alone in a nightgown from this distance as, as much as you can see uh, I'll, I'll scream hey are you okay <laughs> I immediately noticed this and I oh you shit I scream again I don't think she's no. okay yeah. I immediately Should notice we... and I go to the window as well to see what's what's going on you see the same vision the scream comes from her. What do you do? We're like, uh, wh where are we in the... In you're the... a two-story building. You're in the second story. You're looking down far away, um, you know, maybe more than 200 feet away from you, 250 feet away from you. This scream is echoing through the city. So she's just like standing there and screaming and not doing yeah. anything else? Yeah, she's... And we don't see anything she else. Seems... You, you can't from this distance. It's hard for you to really... It, it's kind of like a little dot away from you guys. We don't see, like, lights turning on to see what's happening. There are lights turned on inside the buildings, and they're... Do you look at the sky? Yeah. Sure. There okay. are no stars in the sky. Oh, fuck. Here we go again. <laughs> what do you do? This I... is Nightmare. I go back to sleep. And I put the covers <laughs> on top of me, trying to, like... Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Emily, we need to fight this. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. We are all Emily, awake. I don't think it's a dream. <laughs> this doesn't feel like a dream. I I go on, I pick up my 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 um I put on my armor. Armor. I grab my harpoon and I go out and I start walking towards the door to go outside. I'll go with him. Very well. I go out the window. <laughs> yes, so Emily. Uh, how, uh, how late is, is it? <laughs> this jump scare though. So that's a nightmare. What the fuck? <laughs> um, is this part of the script? It's actually Artorias from the Abyss. But anyway, um, he is uh, the script. Uh, could you please repeat the question? Uh, uh, how late is it? 
Um, oh, this this would be deep into the night. Do we like lose our exhaustion points? Uh, or no. not? Not uh -huh. at this moment. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I'll just leave through like the. I'll follow them basically. Yeah, okay. very well. Not not Vesper because she's like jumping out of the window. <laughs> <laughs> you I was, guys, okay, I was gonna call Emily. Good thing. I take the guys, shortcut. <laughs> you guys all gathering together, move through the streets, rushing the pace, and you approach her. You see now the woman in a nightgown with hair down and covering her face. And do you approach the woman? I. I, are there like pebbles around? Yeah, there are. I grab, I, I grab like one and I, I like, I, I throw at her. Right. Emily! <laughs> I don't know what her, that is! It hits her in the shoulder. And she points up behind you to the roof of a building. I look? Do you all look? We, we all look. Yeah. I look. No, I don't. <laughs> I wait for them to look first. <laughs> you look and she screams and there's nothing there. She screams again and points elsewhere. To another roof. Still nothing. Do you look? No. Yes. yes. I keep not looking. I'll just look at the lady. This time as you look, you see two silhouettes of humanoids, the same size and shape, hovering above a building. Oh no. You blink. <sighs> they vanish. She screams again and points over to another side. The three of you look directed by her finger. And this time, those two silhouettes hover in front of a bright, full moon that is almost exaggerated in size, too close to the city. It is bluish in tone. And as they float atop the building, their voices in perfect unison address you. Welcome, Velox Moors. I hit my stick. <laughs> Who are you? I, st I stand between them and Emily. <laughs> I also ready my weapon. We are one together, and two separately. But who we are matters not as much as who we represent. To you, he is known as the Weaver. To some, he is known as the Awakened Azur. To all, he will become salvation. <clears throat> what do you want? <clears throat> what do we want? Oh, oh, you, you have been with her. You have talked to her. We can see into your mind. We can see everything. Every twisting thread of memory connecting you to pain, to suffering, or even to joy. However fleeting, they're just to remind you of how rotten reality is, but some of you already know that, don't you? But you, you have met Wiley Elix, our foremost rival, enemy, nemesis, and she has given you only empty stories, born of lack of understanding. But, but, but there's, there's more. more. Besides empty, empty stories, stories, she's, she's given, given you an, an empty mission, mission devoid of a meaningful objective. objective. You don't, don't know, know why you're here, here. yet you, you blindly, blindly followed. followed. Was, Was it fear? fear? Was, Was it guilt? guilt? Was, Was it chance? chance? And with each of their words, you sense your thoughts being penetrated, being surveyed, being connected together, everything that you've ever known, that you've ever been. I'm going to ask each one of you in this very moment, and you have to be as fast and as clear and concise to me on what, on your answer. What is the one memory that you want to protect? 
I'll give you five seconds to think about it, and then I'll call each one of you, okay? One memory that you want to protect. All right, are we ready? Violet, you go first. Uh, <clears throat> the moment I quit my job, my job to take care of Ketri. All right, Emily, your one memory. Uh, my mom reading the book to me. Very well, just keeping that one closed in. Yeah. Hajral, your one memory. The memory of um, of picking up my my tempest judgment and realizing that that uh that my my god is real very well and you vesper the moment that arthur agreed that vesper could stay with him and travel the world <laughs> all right you sense them look at you and they seem to be praying onto a specific moment the moment where wily gave you that mission and then you see them look into memories of what turn to that and then you see them you sense that presence recognize two of you vesper and violet these people have seen you you sense them recognize it in this moment where you're sharing it these two people have seen you before and they have seen you see a silver-haired man and then they say the friend wiley spoke about the man you've met and captured is disguised with fickle, bendable honor and capable of immense, immeasurable, iniquitous violence. You wonder if you did the right thing. Such meaningless dilemmas and debates. But we can show you the truth. We can show you the man you captured. Your vision is spun and pulled into the light of the moon behind him as it is tinged with azure lightning, bringing you to a different place. And in that moment, in that moment where you're closing in on the moon, Emily, that same eye, it's just like that moon behind those people. It reminds you of it. And you can't but f help yourself but flinch in your own brain. But you are brought to a different place. Two young twins and their father, climbing winding stairs on an enormous karst, kind of a natural stone pillar. Surrounding them are more of such karsts, some interconnected with bridges, others standing alone, and beneath them a thick jungle. Vesper, your temple, the Ajagari Temple, a place you recognize. Accompanying them, this entourage, there is an, or <clears throat> excuse me, there are an elven woman and a half-elven man with silver hair, whom you recognize, Violet and Vesper, to be Wily and Aiden, Dragon's Bane. When they reach the top of the karst, the twins and their father run into the center of a stone-floored room of the of this kind of temple that they just reached. They look upon something that is displayed at the center of the temple, and you feel glee and joy and excitement, but you don't... The vision is blurred. It's the face of the father seems to be taking prevalence over it. And then... <laughs> two arrows hit each one of the eyes of the older elf. As his face turns to the children... And they yell out in shock. You feel dread, despair, fear. And you look back. And Aiden is holding the bow. Oof. Your vision is pulled away. And they address you again. Is this still the man you want to save? A cold... Blooded murderer. I don't know about this plot <sighs> to to um to save Aiden, right? Like I'm just going with them, right? You are aware that they are on a mission. They have I would say 
it would be up to the group if they have fully informed you uh, of what I it is that you have so. to do. I think we did. There was like one night where... We... Where you told everything, yeah. right? Oh, yeah? Okay. So. You are aware of the plot. But we also know that the twins were involved in the, all the shit in Soguk. At least they helped the other with state the was, yeah? Yeah. Yep. Vesper just goes, and your hands are not clean either. Why should we believe you? You should believe us exactly because our hands are not clean. We are honest about our work, and our work is done for you, for the good of all mortals, for the good of all existence, even. And what is, Sorry. Uh, sorry? What is your yeah. purpose? Our purpose? Hmm. Do we sense the presence of the gods within you, Violet Ion? Yes, you do. Ah, oh, just the same as you, Hashral. It's repugnant, revolting, repulsive. Lies beyond lies. You choose to stay ignorant to the ultimate truth, to our purpose. Why, Why is it, it? Tell, tell me, me. Tell, tell us, huh. that your, your gods, gods only pick and choose to whom they grant their blessing? Why, Why you, you, the rich, rich adventurer swollen, swollen with power, are the poor man, the sickly child, the hungry woman, not more worthy? They have their purpose. It's not our place to judge. Or to ask questions. Look at you, Violet. Lost. Lost in this web of lies. I know the answer. We know the answer. They seek only those that are capable of doing their selfish bidding and then leave the rest to rot. Our Lord's vision encompasses the entirety of existence, he will rid everyone of their suffering, their trauma, the visions that curse their sleepless nights. He will shatter consciousness and destroy morality and usher in true and ultimate freedom. You all wake up in your rooms. See? I knew it! <laughs> I knew! I start pointing at them. I knew it was a dream! And that's where we're going to end oh, shit. tonight's episode. <laughs> Very pleasant. Wholesome twins. <laughs> all right! Well done, everybody. I'm sorry to push in so hard on the nightmares, but kind of just... You kind of just rolled into it, so here we are. Great job, though. Fantastic job on everything. Um, I would like to tell you that on the battle events, you have missed one encounter on the battle events, which was a pirate ship encounter. Oh, so, oh, that would have been cool, though. Uh, that, 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 that was the one that you, you missed. It was a ship-on-ship -ship combat situation oh. that you missed. Uh, but well done on the travels. You hit the Guide Reef Whale, which gave you the two maximum hit points. So thank Ray for that, because it was her role. And then you took two exhaustion points, which was Mick's fault. Um, but... Curse him and shame him. Oh yeah, we lost one now, right? Because we, we full rested. You are going to uh, lose all of them once you complete your long rests, yes. Uh, but that will we will leave for the next session. Um Yikes. You have placed your feet, Velox Moors, upon the continent of Kaifum, the continent where it all began and where it is, is all happening right now and this influence is more powerful than it has ever been upon your minds. And I know, I know that I've been asking a lot of you how you feel, but it is crucial and 
um, very, very, just very important that I keep track of it and that you guys keep track of this because we're about to enter a section of the of the campaign where this will be some of the most important um, parts of it will be how you feel and how you react to certain situations and for that to start becoming natural I just want you guys to connect as much as you can with your own characters and take these points where you're breathing I just spat into Mizzy's eye <laughs> in, the, in, in, the, in the monitor um, for you guys to be um, to be able to uh, to be in, in touch and really know how to react in those situations whenever they come. I am um, so in touch that the whole episode, I'm anxious. And <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's going to be for the rest of the episodes, for the rest of the campaign. <laughs> Unless there was a point, it was like holding my breath. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I am really sorry if at, at any point it gets really too intense. You just tell me, and uh, we'll we'll do a beach episode. Everybody loves those in JRPGs. Yeah. Beach, <laughs> the yeah. beach episode. Everybody loves those, right? So we can do one of those, uh, and uh, so that you guys can blow off some steam. Or for Violet, I guess we just do like a bar brawl where she can just punch a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, we just everybody just or fights. A date episode where those two yeah. have a date apparently. For example, yeah, since Kent was left alone and so good. Oh. oh. Now there are. <laughs> <laughs> now there are at least we have another romance uh, blooming uh, between Vesper and Violet, the double V. Um, but yeah, wow, actually, there's four Vs in this romance. Anyway, um, oh my God. moving on. Um, thank you guys for, for this amazing episode. That. Yeah, I don't know that. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm assuming. Uh, but I'm just going off by what you guys have told me, okay? But you, I don't know if you've changed that. Um, please stop talking, please! <laughs> Doesn't need to go <laughs> Digging so, a hole! I just, digging a hole! You know, you know me, digging, digging hole. Anyway. <laughs> um, great job, guys. I, I have to tell you, I really enjoy, first of all, asking you how you guys are feeling. I love just how you guys have been wrapping your heads around these characters and really feeling for them. Um, and I've just been loving every single moment that you guys have been having together. Um, and yeah, although small part of me is a little bit sorry for throwing you so many nightmares and all of the, these conversations, <laughs> I must say you are taking this like champs um, in this little alternate reality inside the alternate reality of the world. You are taking it, you're taking it like champ. So great it's job always, on that. <clears throat> it's always Inception. how the character feels, never how the player feels. <laughs> yeah, I really don't <laughs> give a shit. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> I, I, I mean, if you, if by your words, if you're feeling a little bit anxious, I mean, it means you're immersed, right? Um, <clears throat> and I hope that you manage to let go of that once the session ends. Um, but anyway, guys, thank you so much for playing once again. Uh, you are doing an amazing job. Oh, it's job. over already? Uh, yes, this <laughs> is the end of the campaign. You reached Port Namelli, it's over. This was one Ooh. episode longer one episode longer than the other campaign that we did, which was 18. That that, <laughs> that big shriek that they did was the we were accidentally like having a stroke and dying, and so they also died, and so yeah. the world was saved. So, Thanks. The world is Bye, saved. Bye, see you next <laughs> I love you. Good job, time. team. <laughs> <laughs> the best. But anyway... Thank you to you and thank you to our viewers and the people that still support uh, our little corner here. Thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. And I hope that you guys are appreciating um, this little slice of the world as well. Um, and if you are in, in, in any trouble watching this, I would like to remind you that you can just close it. So that's also a chance. Although we would like you to witness uh, the, the crew getting just terrified by all of these horrors. Uh, if it gets to, uh, too much at some point, you can always just, you know, leave or something. I don't know. Uh, but um, I can't I can't do much more. This is the theme. This is what we're going for. Um, but thank you so much for watching. We really do appreciate you. Um, and yeah, that's it. We'll return next week uh, with another one. Uh, episode of Requiem, episode 20. It's going to be special for sure. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, oh, oh god, what has he said now? Oh, no. Alright guys, take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.